Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm an interventional radiologist in New Jersey. So I was recently browsing around YouTube and stumbled across another medical YouTuber. I think this person is a med student and I saw the thumbnail. It said, I'm quitting med school. And I have to admit, I was lured in. I was intrigued by the title of that video. So I wanted to investigate further, see exactly why this person was quitting med school. And then I thought to myself, wait a minute, let's do a reaction video and we'll do it live. So I haven't actually seen this video. So it could just be a terrible video and I'm going to react to it. And we're just gonna laugh because this video is gonna be the worst video of all time or I can drop some useful knowledge and maybe help this person or other people who are feeling similar feelings going through med school because it's only normal to go through med school and think maybe this wasn't the right decision for me. I knew so many people that felt this way. So I thought, let's do a reaction video. Let's talk about it. Maybe we can help some people in the process. So let's get to my computer and let's uh, watch this video together. Let's go. All right, so we are going to get right into this. This is from Kinza Hussein. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And I don't know who this person is, but I'm hoping to learn a little bit about her from this video. And hopefully, like I said before, I can give you all some advice from someone who's been in these shoes before and maybe help her out as well. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I do have some fears while I'm making this video because it's totally like me putting myself out there and I'm just gonna go for it anyways. Before we get into this, I have to say, this next generation of like influencers and like med students, residents, they're just like not afraid to say what they want. When I was in med school, we were always like very timid and like scared that we would say the wrong thing or whatnot. But this next generation is just like so down to speak their mind. I'm, I love it. To get started, I'm currently in my pediatric rotation. Maybe that's why she uh, wants to quit medicine because she's on her pediatric rotation. Just kidding for the pediatricians out there. I have friends who are pediatrician. I give them a hard time all the time. And they give me a hard time, that's what we do. And a lot of these feelings started after step one, dedicated period trauma. That was the first time I studied really, really hard for an exam and didn't get the results that I personally wanted. So first, Again, like I said, it's only natural to have these thoughts because everybody does. Now, when she's talking about the step one thing or she didn't get a score that she liked or wasn't high enough, I mean, this is med school. It's just like constantly, constantly beating you down no matter how hard you try. Only the strong survive and it's a test. But you're put through the ringer during med school residency. So she's probably feeling what all of us felt. And it's just kind of created a backlash of emotions um, of imposter syndrome. <laughs> So we're gonna kind of start there. Imposter syndrome as an influencer. So many of my friends have talked about this. I was going to do a video on it, but I feel like so many people have touched on it that I didn't feel like I needed to, but this is so common. Even me now, as an attending interventional radiologist, you sometimes feel like, do I really belong here? Like, am I, can I actually do this stuff? Like. You feel like you shouldn't be doing this stuff, but you've trained your whole life for it. And it's really hard to grasp that. You feel like an imposter. You still have that imposter syndrome feeling early into your career. I started playing the comparison game, which is never healthy. And I honestly just didn't feel good enough because I didn't kind of get what I wanted. In med school, we're taught that like, if you don't get 100% on everything, then like it's a failure. But that's just not true. This is just a really hard path. It's okay to get a 98. It's okay to get an 85. See, this is common. It goes back to a couple of things I've talked on, like even Student Doctor Network and all this stuff. You're comparing yourself with the creme de la creme, the top of their class. Those are the only people posting, but the majority of people aren't posting on there and aren't making these extraordinary scores and getting into the top medical specialties at Harvard and all this stuff. That's just not happening to a majority of people but that's what you hear about the most and she's saying she compares herself to like other social media people and that's not what you should do you should just focus on yourself but it's easier said than done now the other side of things is medicine is also a field that takes a lot of education to pursue and it takes a lot of money my tuition at my school is a little over sixty thousand dollars Woo! Was that a heart attack? $60,000? I thought I paid a lot, but maybe tuition has gone up substantially since I was in school. I don't know. Where did she go to school? Does anybody know? All right, if you know what med school she goes to, leave in the comments below. I'm just curious who charges that kind of tuition. It's outrageous. With a loan comes interest that you have to pay off on top of your loan. Now, after you've graduated, you have like six months when the loan payments start kicking in. That's partly true, but yes, 
you can defer it or pay down what you can afford, like what I talked about in my student loan video, link up here, the income driven repayment plan, which is way better than some of these other plans where you just pay thousands of dollars a month to start off in residency. It's not gonna work. And then yes, when you become an attending, the big salary kicks in but that depends on what profession you go into. But then the conversation turns into what profession are you going to pursue slash what profession do you have the scores and qualifications for? This is what I wanted to say. She said that there are only some specialties that you can get into based on your board store and that is 100% true and it drives me insane because there's so much pressure on the step one exam. If you don't get a good enough score to be an interventional radiologist, you literally just have to close that door and be like, well, can't be an interventional radiologist anymore. I guess I'll just do something I like less. That's how it is. It's so annoying. My point is, you shouldn't have any doors shut based off one stupid test. Usually in other companies, as you get older, as you have more experience, you level up, the workload can sometimes go down and the salary goes up. That's not true. I mean, you can just take finance for example. Yes, they level up and they have more people working under them, but with that leveling up comes more responsibility. So it's almost more stressful because you have all these people working under you and you report to the boss, the CEO, and if you don't perform, then see you later. So it's just as stressful at the top you may do minimal less work, but from my friends who tell me that have been CEO and CFO administrative assistants at some of the biggest financial firms in the city, I know for a fact that those guys work 10 times harder than physicians. Like, no joke. I've kind of noticed, even in my pediatric rotations, that doctors have no control over their schedule. I have complete control of my interventional schedule. I can schedule whatever patients I want on whatever day I want. Obviously, I'm not gonna be like, oh, I can't do this procedure for 10 weeks, but within reason, I can coordinate it with my schedule. Now, some of the inpatients, there's like emergency procedures and whatnot I can't do anything about, but for the outpatient stuff, I can schedule it. But she's probably just talking about pediatrics, so, uh, yeah, not true with all fields. It's salary, so whether you see 20 patients or you see 40, your salary's not changing. Yeah, but that's the same across the board. I'll go back to the finance comparison I did earlier. If my friend has to do, you know, spreadsheets till midnight, he doesn't get paid any extra. He gets the same salary he does if he didn't have to do that. So in one of my rotations, um, one of the doctors, mother-in-law passed away and this mother-in-law had been in her life for like since high school so several years and she only took one day off because there's guilt associated with taking more days off for your huge problem with this not her there's a lot of doctors out there who feel guilty when they have to take time off and be away from their patients but this is like the whole reason i'm doing my youtube channel is because I just wanna normalize physicians being human. We're actually human too. Yes, we take care of patients, but it's okay to take some time off and like relax and think about yourself and hang out with your significant other or go hiking or whatnot. You don't have to be in the hospital 24 seven, but a lot of people feel guilty in medicine for doing so. Sometimes I feel guilty, but also I know that I'm helping my own mental wellness of being away from the hospital. I can't be there all the time. It's not good for you. So I'm really hoping that there are residency programs and careers out there that value your mental health. See, I wanted to find a practice that valued this stuff and I did. There are residency programs like that too. I can't tell you how many times, I mean, we had what, 30 something people in my residency, bound to have something happen and someone needs to take some time off and we always covered. How will I keep my motivation up? How will I keep my passion and drive up? How will I stay consistent? It's just like, a lot. She has all these questions, but I have one simple answer. Just do it. You can keep up content creation in med school and residency. I did it. It wasn't that hard. I mean, I worked a lot, but just do it. If you're ever worried about doing something, don't think about it. Just do it. And that goes into my last thing. Being in medicine can feel really isolating when a lot of the people you know and a lot of the friends you know are already working maybe part-time, full-time, remote, being able to fit in all the pleasures they have in life. Yes, facts. When I was in med school, all my friends were making hundreds of thousands of dollars in finance. I was very uh, jealous while I was sitting in the library 
till midnight. They were making hundreds of thousand dollars and I was, I was questioning my life decisions at that point. But ultimately it paid off but it's hard to see that. And also a lot of my friends in medicine had shorter residencies than me and were already out practicing for many years while I was still getting beat down as a fellow. So I, I completely agree. There are also a lot of things I love about medicine, which is why I've been having a blast on my rotation so far. There are a lot of aspects of it that I don't like and that need reform. If we don't start talking about it more, then leaders in the space can't really do much about it, so. Let's go, Kenza. I like this. We do need to talk about it more. And I feel more comfortable talking about all this stuff now that I'm like a board certified physician and I made it all the way through and I feel more comfortable talking about it. So I'm glad she feels that way too. I like this kind of stuff. Should I follow her on Instagram or should I do it after I post this video? I wanna surprise her. I don't want her to have any like inkling that I'm doing this video. <laughs> That officially concludes this video. I really enjoyed this video. Kenza, thank you so much for sharing it with everybody. And if you want me to do more videos like this, I see some of these videos all over my YouTube page of like med students and residents feeling some type of way. So I thought maybe I'll just do some reactions to them because I can provide some good advice. Been in those shoes. Some of you all are in those shoes and I can just give you everything that I've already been through. So let me know in the comments below if you want me to do more of those. And uh, as always, smash like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.